Welcome back friends to the shop. Have you ever had one of those days where everything goes wrong? We were up all night with the sweet loaf. I think she woke up three times. This morning, if that wasn't bad enough, Mrs. W had a mouse run across her foot. That definitely puts me in the doghouse since I haven't been setting the traps. And we needed to use the welder today. And I have two welders and both of them are broken. Sometimes I feel like I just want to go back to bed, but there's work to do around here. So we're going to put the legs on the, on the, carpenter, on the carpenter's bench today. What was that? Um, and uh, well, keep me in your prayers. Hopefully uh, we don't cut a finger off or something. So let's, um, let's get started. I cannot for the life of me figure out what's wrong with this welder. I bought that 20 years ago. I've always hated this welder. It's always been, a, actually it's been a quite a terrible welder. It um, has not fed very good. Whenever you got a, the slightest bind in the, in the cord, it wouldn't push the cable through. It's just, it's really been terrible. I, I'm, I'm mad at the guy who sold it to me. <laughs> when I went in there, I wanted a miller, right? I had my mind set up on a miller and I should have known better. And they were running a promotion on this thing. And he, he, of course he tells me that this is even better than a miller and obviously it is not. So I guess to look on the bright side, I guess maybe it's a blessing. I, I, I sent Brian down to, uh, to the welding shop to go get a miller. I'm so done with this. I pulled the whole covers off. I've spent all morning trying to get it going. Something inside grenaded. It's got power. I, I don't know what it is, um, but good riddance. So we'll show you the new miller when it comes in. This thing, it's just, it's just got to go. Now, before we put our legs on, we're going to put our vice, we're going to locate our vice. And there's a couple reasons for this. Now, we're going to be using the, the metal legs. And you don't just bolt a vice onto a bench. There's a lot to, or not a lot, there's a couple things a guy wants to consider. Um, we want this to be strong. So we want it to be, if possible, centered right over one of the legs. That's one of the reasons why we put our vice on the corner. Obviously we can work it from two sides, we can access it better, but have, being able, uh, if we have to pound on it to drive straight down and transfer that, all that force on a leg makes it uh, really nice. There's nothing worse than banging on a bench with a floppy vise that's put in with some lag screws, right? So what my, what my hope is, what I, my plan is, is that we can actually put one of the bolts or even maybe two of the bolts on this far side through the vise actually into the leg itself and that's gonna make it very, very strong. Now I was telling you guys I was not going to cut this off of here uh, or square these edges until I uh, let it dry, but I need to do it now because it's going to affect the way we place it. And it's, it, it, to come back, we'd have to unbolt everything and start over. So let's uh, square this. Let's make these cuts really quick. We'll put some beeswax on there so it doesn't check and then we'll, uh, we'll get the vise installed. I'm going to use a skill saw uh, to cut this. If you don't have a skill saw, you can definitely do this with a hand saw. You can see here where we went wrong. When we did our glue up, I didn't true these uh, before the glue set up, but it doesn't matter. We just, the bench is gonna be a little bit shorter. So we'll square off, make sure you square off the front of the bench. Now make sure when you, uh, before you cut this, get whatever it is you're gonna have uh, to treat this on pretty quick. I, I'm, I get it on, you know, within, on the same day. I'm gonna use a, a beeswax that I'll melt and paint on here. Uh, to keep that from checking. We want this to drive very, very slow. That's gonna be the key to keep it from cracking. If we do that, uh, it will, uh, will, will be much more likely uh, to, to have a, a clean edge on there. If you're gonna use a power saw, I probably recommend against freehanding it. Uh, most guys, certainly myself, can't cut that straight. We don't wanna go to all the trouble of making such a nice bench and then have a crooked end on it. So we'll just use a piece of uh, one by or whatever you have around for a straight edge and we'll clamp it down. Go ahead and set the depth of your saw. Now, if you don't have a big, big foot saw like this, it's gonna cut through in one pass. Uh, you're gonna have to finish it off with a hand saw, but there's, but there's no reason not to go ahead and cut it. So do the same thing I'm doing here. Uh, just use your skill saw and you'll have a little bit to cut by hand. It'll still save you a ton of work. Here's a pro tip for you. Measure from the outside of your blade to the outside of your fence and take a Sharpie and write it on there. That way we know exactly each time where to put our straight edge because it's going to be an offset for the fence. So I wrote on there four and a quarter. So all I have to do is go from my line here and measure four and a quarter. And that's exactly where I want to put my, my mark.
Here's another trick to put in your mental tool kit. So it's common in the trades, uh, you'll hear guys say burn an inch. Uh, burning an inch means that you just add an inch onto your measurement. This end right here of your tape measure, it slides back and forth. And it's sometimes it's, it's difficult to line it up and guys will make the mistake of not pushing it in. And then you lose that and your, your marks are always off. So to burn an inch, you just kind of eliminate the complications of that end and I'll co go to one. So we know our measurement was four and a quarter. So we're just gonna add one to it. So now we're gonna go five and a quarter, make that mark, clamp these guys down. I see a particular young teenage boy might have forgotten to bring his papa's clamps in from the, <laughs> from the weather there. I may have been a little hard on Jack there. I guess we were working together when we left those clamps out there. Speaking of Jack, I can't tell you how proud we are of him. So, um, as, a, as you guys know, uh, we entered him in... Uh, did I tell you the story about how we entered him into track, track or uh, cross country? Uh, maybe I forgot. Um, Actually, Mrs. W is to blame for this. It was so funny. So, uh, you know, summertime, and we're, we're thinking, you know, Jack, you need to get out of the house. You know, we need to do something. So she <laughs> signed him up for cross country. And over dinner, you know, in, in the state we live in, uh, you could participate in sports if you homeschool. And over dinner, uh, we sprung it on him that uh, we'd signed him up for cross country, and he, he doesn't like to run, you know. <laughs> yeah. And that practice started the next day. He was, uh, well, he didn't talk to us for two days, but he went to his practice and he, you know, he, he grumbled about it, but we, we both knew it was good for him, you know, get out and make some friends and, and you know, competitive uh, sports, you know, it's always a good thing. And uh, man, he's just, he's doing so good. So his first meet, he, there was 120 kids running and I think he finished in the, um, oh, I forget, in the, you know, in the, in the, in the top group, you know, maybe the top 15% or so. Um, and then yesterday we were gone uh, out of town for his uh, second meet um, and he finished, uh, of, I think there were 100 kids or so, and he finished a 12th overall. Uh, he's he's going to be a fast runner. And actually, you, I, I've never talked about this, but Mrs. W's uh, brother was, a, um, was one of the fastest runners, uh, track runners in the, in the country. Here's a pro tip. Don't put your clamp in the way of your saw. Good grief. Before you paint it, don't forget your, your uh, to chamfer your edge there. Again, we're doing that to make it more durable. You probably noticed that I stopped my plane short of coming to the edge here. When you're working on the end grain, remember these, these are like straws lined up and, and that blade will take and it will break that corner off. So always come from the other side and match it up. That way you won't run the risk of tearing that corner out. I might even be a little more aggressive on these outside corners here on the front so you don't catch snag stuff. I don't like the look of a bull nose typically, but they are extremely practical, especially if you have kids running around. If you have kids working in your shop, you know, that still are a little bit toddly, you know, these corners right here, you know, they're about head height, they'll run in and they'll hit them. So um, kind of consider that. That looks pretty good there. We don't want to lose that clean, nice, clean edge on there, but we also don't want it to be too sharp. Here's how you want that corner to look. Now, if you're using a sander, you don't have a plane, be careful, because those power sanders will, will roll that all over there and it looks really bad. So you, you want to just leave, just be careful. You'd be better off not to use a power sander and just put it on a block of wood. Let's go ahead and we'll melt some beeswax. Now, if you don't have beeswax, I don't know why, uh, if you just took some of your wife's old candle ends uh, it, what, throw those in an old can or a pot or something, it should uh, work just fine, or, or some uh, just paint. I'm 
might be a little bit hot. Looks like we're good and melted. I've had real good luck with just applying the beeswax with a foam, just a foam brush. It seems to work pretty good here. But we just, what we're trying to do here is just make sure that we coat every bit of it. Keep your can under your brush um, and then you'll collect your wax so you don't, uh, it doesn't drip all over the floor, not too much anyway. I've used a lot of foam brushes in my time, but I have never had one as bad. <laughs> As bad as this one, <laughs> that's absolutely useless. Down to doing it by hand here. Well, friends, I guess that's about all the time we have for today. Mrs. W had to run to town to take uh, Jack to his, um, his um, cross country and the sweet loaf has come down with something. It's been one of those days, I tell you, the baby's sick and mice running on Mrs. W and all sorts of things. So I'm gonna uh, cut it, cut it uh, I'm gonna shut it down a little early today. Keep us in your prayers and may God bless you and your families. And we'll see you guys on the next video.